Hey guys, um, welcome back to the channel. This week what we're doing is a video on Eldon Square. So Eldon Square is actually the predominant shopping centre within Newcastle upon Tyne. Uh, and the construction of this is quite interesting. As you'll see, it involved demolition of some historic buildings and it really changed the city centre, taking it from what was quite an old fashioned layout into adding a, a real modern, at the time, hundreds of new shops and frontages. So if you look at the history of the old Eldon Square, the original Eldon Square was designed by famous Tyneside architect John Dobson. This was constructed during the 1825-40 to 40 reconstruction of Newcastle City Centre, so it was this point where Grange Town was built alongside other projects like that. Um, this was originally commissioned obviously by Richard Granger to produce the uh, he wanted to produce a design for three terraces facing a central square, with each terrace being around two and a half storeys. There's a central war memorial within Eldon Square. This was unveiled by Earl Haig in 1923. This is situated at the centre of the square and this is a large Portland stone pedestal and sort of forms the focal point of the square. In regards to um, its construction, it's also important to consider the time this was. This was actually when Newcastle was trying to be the Brasilia of the North and was trying to really redevelop its city in, it, in a new way. So Newcastle was actually one of the first cities in the UK to have its own planning department. The council at this time was headed by T. Dan Smith, um, an infamous man on Tyneside. He basically brought a lot of these projects, these last two videos, and a few more will be featuring about the projects that were actually built during his time. Wilfred Burns was the um, chief planning officer at the time and was responsible for a lot of these projects as they went through. So as with this last large-scale redevelopment city centre, as that happened with 1825 to 1840 within the original Eldon Square, a redevelopment of Newcastle City Centre in the 1960s often saw the opportunity to improve the space. Well, that's what they actually intended. And there was an actual opposition to this project at the time of demolition. So as I said, T. Dan Smith wanted to make Newcastle sort of the Brasilia of the North, so Brasilia being a great planned city, well, thought to be at the time. T.N. Smith often wished to bring famous architects to Tyneside such as Lee Corbusier. In terms of Eldon Square he actually wanted to bring Danish architect Arne Jacobsen, famous for his style of functionalism. However with, as with many of these proposed architects that T.N. Smith wanted to bring to Tyneside this did fall through and uh, Arne Jacobsen did not design Eldon Square. As part of this reconstruction, the west and north terraces around the square were demolished to be replaced by the Eldon Square shopping centre. Wilfred Burns, obviously the chief planning officer for Newcastle at the time, had the following to say regarding the redevelopment. He said, The building of Eldon Square will start the multi-level development of the city, and from there the pattern is set. So this actually lies true to this day. Now old Eldon Square has been replaced. The current existence of Eldon Square relies on, sort of, making piecemeal improvements to this, um, to instruct it to sort of improve its development and make it more people friendly. Eldon Square project was a joint venture between Newcastle Corporation and Capital and Counties Property Limited. This estimated to take three years to complete. During the construction there were a number of issues. One of these was actually the difficulty of constructing such a scheme in the middle of a busy city centre. Um, this obviously brought a number of difficulties. The site was actually 10 acres, so it's a huge amount of space within a city centre and obviously the city centre was still operating, still other stores were trading at the time, so it was trying to build this without disrupting um, everything else in the city centre, which is an enormous task. So uh, did they solved these issues sort of using vehicle wheel washers we used on the site because they didn't want to bring mud from the site out onto the city roads. The building of Elton Square actually discovered two old burns, so burns are uh, in the northeast, there are a term for a like a river valley or a small stream. So two burns were actually discovered on the site. Um, these were actually most likely early tributaries at the time, which obviously had to be dealt with. Um, whilst the facades of Elm Square were lost, the um, the scheme actually aimed to retain the Nelson Street facades. Uh, this actually backs onto Granger Market. This was actually one of Granger and Dobson's masterpieces, and this sort of had to be shored up while the 
while the demolition was carried out. And the uh, shopping centre structure was actually built behind this. This now lies where um, Grey's Quarter is. And this, you can see, is actually an early recognition of uh, facadism on Tyneside. This is where they obviously keep the facade of the building, but then build a new structure behind it. This facade is still retained to this day and actually still play, provides a pleasant street character to this site. No, um, Highfriars Street ran between Blackett Street and Nelson Street. So this street, Highfriars Street, was to be demolished. Uh, this actually formed one of the main thoroughfares for an inside part of the shopping centre. Uh, the intricate YMCA building on the site was also lost. This was replaced by the glass facade of Eldon Square. Uh, the YMCA building was moved out to um, John Dobson Street at a later date. So the bus concourse was another uh, major thing. Buses historically have stopped at Haymarket bus station, which is along Percy Street. As part of the construction of Elm Square, a new bus concourse was to be created underneath the shopping centre. Um, this actually had the obvious problems of noise, pollution and actually being an unpleasant environment for bus passengers. At the time, Wilfred Burns was aware of this problem. However, he was overly ambitious of how quickly electric buses would actually come to fruition as they, he saw the solution to the problem of polluted bus station was being electric buses being rolled out. Um, as you can see, even now today in 2020, the number of full on electric buses is very minute, if any. I don't think any actually operate on Tyneside. You'll get hybrid buses, but you will not get fully electric buses. On this level also, next to the bus concourse, was a pub called the George and Dragon, and this was split over two levels. So in regards to the opening, the first part of the scheme to open was actually the Green Market car park. It was the multi-storey car park located off Newgate Street and would house 750 cars. The Elden Square Shopping Centre opened in 1976 and as mentioned before partially replaced three sides of the old George and Elden Square. Uh, the scheme had been criticised by writer Christopher Booker calling it the greatest single example of architectural vandalism in Britain since the Great War. When the centre opened, it was actually the largest shopping centre in the UK. There was actually a massive increase in retail provision for the city centre. Beforehand, um, the existing buildings of the city centre did not offer the desired floor plates or interiors that shoppers would begin to prefer. Obviously, shoppers would begin in this time to prefer modern, airy, light interiors, which some of the old buildings in Newcastle could not provide. So the popular Newcastle department store, Fenix, operated um, along Northumberland Street. They opened a new rear entrance into the shopping centre. Bainbridges, formerly part of the John Lewis Partnership, also opened a store inside the shopping centre. When Elm Square originally opened, um, it had a distinct like brick characteristic and had a real uh, distinct material palette it used. This was important in creating sort of a unique shopping experience, which at the time was a great interest to shoppers, as well as the large shopping provision with over 100 new shops for Newcastle. As part of the scheme to redevelop the city centre, a hotel was proposed as part of Elden Square scheme. It's something located within Old Elden Square. The tower would have been around 20 storeys tall and would likely be constructed in the style of time, which probably would have seemed like a brutalist style hotel tower. And we could presume there's been a similar style to the nearby Berwick Court, maybe of higher material um, quality due to this difference between a hotel rather than a, a housing block. This was actually also meant to be designed by Arne Jacobson, but obviously this scheme never came to fruition. So you can actually see some models they actually did of the Elden Square development, and you can see this um, obviously large tower that obviously never came to fruition. And it's quite lucky this didn't come to fruition because this would have eaten up more of Elden Square and eroded its character even further. As for any large shopping centre, Elden Square has gone through a number of large reconstruction projects. In 1986, a nearby metro centre opened. This was located off the A1 in Gateshead. This was an out-of-town mall that offered much greater access to motor vehicles and did not have to deal with the constraints of being in a city centre location. This provided great competition at Ellen Square. Following this, in 1989, a new shopping centre operated by different owners was added to Elden Square. This was called Eldon Garden. This opened to the north of Eldon Square this is technically a separate shopping centre owned and managed separately. However, an entrance was built 
from the shopping centre into Eldon Square. This featured a green bridge which would connect the two shopping centres. Eldon Garden was previously a three-storey shopping centre. Over its life, it struggled with attracting tenants and footfall. Even with the connection, um, even with the connection into Eldon Square, it always had a lower footfall than Eldon Square itself. The ground floor of the centre was closed off at some point due to the lack of interest by tenants. This now houses the Tesco Express and other retail units. The Goose Pub also takes up some of the ground floor space as well. Eldon Garden is a, a shell of its former self now and it doesn't have very many tenants taking up its space. If you go for a wander around now, you, you won't really find much in there of any value, but this is obviously, as you can see from the, probably the pictures, it was designed to be quite a high class, elegant shopping centre. Eldon Garden actually replaced the former Handyside Arcade. Handyside Arcade was a historic shopping arcade within Newcastle upon Tyne. This originally opened in 1906 and was created by George Handyside. Another significant portion of Eldon Square when it opened was actually the Green Market. This operates sort of like a green grocer's with um, a number of retail units for market owners to operate on. This obviously hosted a number of independent stores and market traders. Green Market was eventually scheduled for demolition in order to make way for a new uh, section of the centre. This was the main anchor of Debenhams and would see a removal of the Green Market multi-storey car park and Green Market itself. So this is the end closer towards Newgate Street and the gate area of the city. The Green Market was originally meant to be located to a new site in the city centre. However, the council deemed this was actually too expensive to do due to the cost of land within the city centre. This meant a number of greengrocers and other market traders were actually located out of the city and were pushed out of the city in order to procure more high quality retail space. Uh, in the planning notes for this, they say the economic benefit of having these high-end retailers like Debenhams come to the city was obviously greater than the need for green market. However, I do feel this is sort of pushing away local traders in the interest of uh, national brands, which is never good for any council to sort of do. The origins of the Green Market actually trace back hundreds of years. The market was moved to High Friars in Elton Square after its previous building was demolished. But four years later, the new version of the market was also set to close as well. This actually meant that council had wasted money relocating the market and paying compensation to the owners, to the renters, just to dis demolish it again. The new Green Market originally opened in 1976 and was closed in January 2007 to make way for this new development of Debenhams and new stores. The deputy leader of the council at the time, David Faulkner, said, any comment about the cost to the council has to be in context of what has been an incredibly successful redevelopment of Eldon Square. I think this is in the best interest of Eldon Square, of the traders as a whole, and the viability of the city and council taxpayers of Newcastle. So this is quite an effective way of actually saying, whilst we pretend to care about local business, the higher rates provided by anchors such as Debenhams is much more important to the viability of Newcastle as a whole. However, what you need to consider here is that Newcastle's role as a regional capital and the need for promoting high-end retail within its city centre, especially with competition by places such as the Metro Centre. However, destroying a trader's market and not replacing it is one easy way to show your tax base you don't actually care about, the, your, they, you don't actually care about them. So obviously, in 2008, the council decided it would be too costly to construct a new green market. In 2008, some renovation was done to the size of Elden Square Shopping Centre. It was actually done to improve the appearance of the square. This featured new landscaping and ground level access to the shopping centre. This would have seen a lot of the original brick facades replaced with new glass facades in order to improve its sort of outlook onto the square. In 2013, the shopping centre was named into Elden Square after being partially purchased by the Into Group. It should note through the whole time of Elden Square's life, it has been partially 50% owned by the council. As part of the new redevelopments, there was a new bus station. So in 1993, they actually were tried to refurbish the existing bus station underneath the shopping center to improve the environment and visual amenity of this. This tried to introduce more light and colour into this area, which is a dark, dingy space. It was an important project of trying to improve the main entrance point of the city. However, it's not clear these refurbishments actually made any real improvement. Following this, in 2008, a new bus station was constructed, 
as part of the M&S extension. The M&S extension would actually make this M&S store one of the largest in the country. This would, have connect, this would have created a new bus station at Haymarket, as well as refurbishment of the existing bus concourse. This would replace with a new gloss facade attached to the existing Elton Square. This would have created a new lower ground level of Elton Square, with more space for retailers and a new entrance through from Old Elm Square into the bus concourse. This was obviously a massive improvement over the existing conditions of the bus station. The existing bus station is a much more inviting entrance to the city. However, as with the closure of the Wallswick Street and bus station near the Reddy Bridge, uh, this, is the, this is the city's only major bus station. Our next major addition is Grey's Quarter. In 2017, following a refurbishment of this part of the centre, Grey's Quarter, which formed to the form of High Friar Street, opened as a food court for Elden Square. This hosted a number of restaurants from popular UK restaurant chains. However, many of these reno recent renovations have eroded the character of Elden Square. Previously, previously Elden Square had a distinct and definite personality. This included artwork and statues within the main shopping centre, as well as a complete material palette of using mainly bricks and glass as a sort of ode to Scandinavian uh, brutalism. This has been eroded away with the recent renovations that has now left a stale and clinical feel into the shopping centre. There is no vi visual difference between this and the metro centre. Whilst both owned by In2, both previously used to offer it a distinct experience for shoppers, both which have lost this. In regards to the future of the site, with the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic, Into the Holdings Company, now responsible for around 50% ownership of Elden Square, entered liquidation. This put the future of the city centre's main retail provision in jeopardy. With high streets around the country already struggling, the pandemic impacted the football further. The future of such large retail provision in the city centre is uncertain, as the current trends show that the city centre retail provision is likely to fall. However, the ownership of this centre being partially managed by Newcastle City Council is unlikely they'll allow such a large employer and attraction to the city close. However, its future and any future schemes that will happen to it are unknown. So thank you for watching this video about Elm Square. Uh, this was just trying to cover one of the major redevelopment schemes of the city centre that really impacted a lot of streets and that changed a lot of streets and moved everything around and created the city centre you see today.